Hi guys, it's 2021, we're supposed to have flying cars by now and smart robots everywhere, but the distribution board in my house still looks like this. This is horrible. No Wi-Fi, no display, nothing. And as the guy who loves DIY home automation, I take it personally. Today we're gonna fix this by building a distribution board that has a display, Wi-Fi, can measure power and a lot of other stuff, and sends data to the internet. So get some coffee and let's get started. Since I'm building a smart distribution board, I need a display to show some useful information. I decided to use 1602 LCD display with an A2C bus module. It of course would be much cooler to use an OLED display here, but OLEDs have burn-in issues and the display should be capable of working 24 by 7 for many years. So this LCD looks like a good solution here. Placing a square c module under the display here is not an option, because I don't have enough space here. Not a big deal of course, I just need to solder a bunch of wires. And here is the a square c module. I already removed 4 SMD components here, I recommend doing the same. Two of the components were just a red LED with a resistor. But the most important here is to remove 4.7K pull-up resistors. Why remove resistors, you may ask? Well, the display needs 5V to operate, and the resistors pull A2C bus to 5V. But I'm going to use ESP8266, which uses 3.3V logic. So I'm just gonna use the external resistors that will pull A2C bus to 3.3V, which gonna make everything perfectly compatible. Adding a decoupling capacitor to the power supply line is a good idea also. And after soldering a lot of wires, I want to make sure that the display still works. Perfect, it works. Now I just need to mount everything. Using hot glue adhesive was probably a bad idea here, so later I decided to use silicone sealant, which can easily handle high temperature without melting. The next step for me was writing the code for the project and testing the energy monitor module. It took a couple of days. My projects often just work in the progress, so a lot of decisions were made during the actual building process. The last problem I had to solve is to implement the overvoltage protection. The voltage readings we already getting from the energy monitor module, but how to turn off the electricity in my house using software? It was a challenge. Here is an interesting solution that I came up with. I am going to use residual current circuit breaker. This device automatically disconnects a circuit when it detects that the electric current is not balanced between the supply and return conductors of the circuit. And creating this unbalancing current is easy, we just need a relay and a resistor or a capacitor. Let me demonstrate. Please don't repeat this experiment, it is dangerous and be careful with the capacitor when it's charged. Now I think it is time to show the full circuit of this project. Link to the circuit and the source code you can find in the description to this video. And now I just need to make the main board. Let's start. First let's solder female socket header connectors for the ESP8266. Now we need to solder three 4.7K pull-up resistors. Two of them are pull-up resistors for the A2C bus. They pull A2C bus to 3.3V. Another resistor is pull-up resistor for the one-wire bus. This is the bus for the digital temperature sensor. Now let's solder header connectors for every device. Everything is going to be connected to this board using header connectors, so it's very convenient. There is not much to tell here, everything has to be soldered according to the schematic, so let's just do it. Here is the finished board after cleaning. 
Now I just need to solder a pin header connector for the display. Perfect. Let's install the board. Next step is to choose a power supply. I decided not to use this crappy board from AliExpress that I previously wanted to use, it doesn't look reliable. No fuse, no filters, I don't like this. So I'm gonna use a charger from a smartphone. This is much better, let's solder wires. Let's cover everything with silicon sealant. Perfect. Now let's mount energy monitor module and the relay with the capacitor for the overvoltage protection. I decided to use a piece of glass here. And of course I add fuses everywhere, I just want to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Ok, let's connect wires and mount everything. Ok, perfect. Let's solder some wires for the relay. And wires for the power monitor module. Ok, that's perfect. While I was waiting for the circuit breakers, I decided to analyze my other monitor module. <laughs> because I never trust devices that were built in China. That is when I noticed this. Two SMD resistors that have mains voltage applied to them. The problem with those resistors, they have a maximum voltage rating of 200 volts. My paranoia will not allow me to sleep knowing this. I hate when China makes something like this. I have to fix it. I decided to replace those resistors with the series of smaller resistors. This can handle even 2000 volts. Now the resistors replaced and my paranoia is happy now, so let's continue. And now circuit breakers have arrived, so I started preparing everything for the installation. Almost forgot to install DS18B20 temperature sensor, let's install it now. Before the installation I did some final tests, that is when I measured the current through the capacitor that should trigger the residual current circuit breaker and it is only 15 mA. Not enough, although it works. I need to add one more capacitor to make it at least 30 mA. Ok, that is good enough. Let's add two sequentially connected 470k resistors. They just gonna discharge capacitors and probably not very needed here. So that is how it all looks now. Now everything is ready for the installation. The actual installation I didn't record, there is nothing interesting there, I just connected wires to the circuit breakers, that's it. So here is the final result. Now I can turn everything off from a smartphone, let me demonstrate. It works! And this is how it looks inside. And this is how the web page looks like. Here we have live information about voltage, power, current, frequency, power factor, energy meter and temperature inside the distribution board. If voltage becomes too high, the system will turn everything off in my house. 
and I'm gonna get a text message with the reason why. If temperature gets high, I also gonna get a message. But that is not all. We also have live charts, live voltage values for example. Or even power consumption if you need that. It shows minimum, maximum and the last value. Let me show what happens when I turn this hair dryer on. We immediately see it on the chart. So basically I have live charts with power consumption in my house. That's cool. Let's try again. It works. Also, it sends data to the internet every minute, so I can easily see what voltage I had and when. So that is pretty much it for today. In the description you will find everything needed to build this project. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.